Hello, Serious Survivor here. Today I want to look at how to use variables in a program to count. Sometimes you need to count the number of times something is repeated or maybe the overall number of cycles or this can be used for anything. Counting the number of welds, counting the number of motions, whatever you need to do. But when you do need to count for whatever reason, there are a few ways we can do this and we're going to look at the most common ways and the simplest ways. First, you have to have a variable. So we're going to create a variable very quickly. We go to AVB, Program Data, and in this case, since I'm counting, I'm going to use num data type, the numerical data type. So once I'm in my numerical data type, simply create a new variable. And I'm going to call this one in counter. Oh, let me spell it right. In counter one. And I'm going to make this a global variable. <clears throat> it's a variable, so I don't need to change the storage type. Since it is global, it will work for my robot, or if I have cooperating robots, either one. Module doesn't matter, since it's global. And if you're curious about more about creating variables, check out our variable creation video on Serious Survivor channel. All right, so now I'm ready. Okay, and there's our variable. So I'm going to close this menu, and now I'm back in my program editor. Now... I'm just going to insert these instructions here after this first joint move. And we insert anything we're going to insert into our program. We do it one way, and that's through this Add Instruction button here. When I tap this function key, Add Instruction, I'll get my instruction menus here. It's usually going to pop up with the common menu the first time that you choose this. So I'm going to press this arrow right here, and it'll drop down a menu of all the available menus. Now the majority of your incrementation features or your counting features are going to be under your mathematics menu. Now you can find them under other menus too, but I use the mathematics menu because they're all right here. So we're going to look at a couple of ways here, the easiest way and then some other ways to actually increment or count with a variable. The first one I'm going to use is INCR. This stands for increment. When I choose this instruction, I choose it and it takes me to an argument screen. On that argument screen, all I have to worry about is selecting the name of the variable here that I want to count with. And we just created encounter1, so I'm going to select it. So increment encounter1. Hit OK. And there it is in my line of code. If I drop this menu down so I can see everything, it's going to make a joint move to wherever this position happens to be at. And then it's going to increment this counter or simply add one to it. That's what increment does. It's a built-in feature that adds one to whatever variable you place there every time the robot passes this line of code. So let's look at another instruction. Add instruction, mathematics menu. Let's look at the add feature. When I select add, it's going to take me to my argument screen. And when you start choosing what we call simple instructions, then it's going to default to the last choice you made. As you see here, encounter1 automatically appeared in my code, and that's because this is a simple instruction, and it will default to the last choice I made. So if I need to change that, I simply just highlight it or tap it and choose the variable I want. But in this case, I'm going to stick with the same variable. So now what I have to do is determine the value, the add value. What do I want to add to this counter. If I hit new and try to add in a numerical value, the controller will refuse it. When you choose new here, it's looking for a new name, a new name of a piece of data. If I want to use an actual mathematical value, I'm going to choose this 1, 2, 3 button down here. When I tap it, it will bring up a keypad right here. And on this keypad, I simply enter in the value that I want to add to this counter. So when we look at this line of code here, we're add to encounter the value of whatever I specify. Let's say 1. Say OK. And OK again. And now when we look at the code, add to encounter the value of 1. So if encounter was 1 when the robot reaches, reaches this line of code, it will now be 2. So both of these, the way you see this line here and this line here set up, they're going to do exactly the same thing. They're simply going to add one to that counter. And this is one way that I would count my cycles with. Put this at the beginning of my code, so every time the robot cycled through and began the program again, it would add one to my counter. Let's look at another method. And that's right here, this colon and equal sign. This is called the assign instruction.
The assign instruction is a very powerful instruction when it comes to mathematics. If it is mathematically possible on the controller, the assign instruction can do it. So let's choose it. When we choose assign, one of the first things we notice is there's nothing, there's no name here. It doesn't say add, increment, decrement, move, or anything like that. That's because with this instruction, this is the instruction, the colon and the equal sign. Here, I want a variable, and on the other side is the value that I'm assigning to this variable. Now, if I want to count with the same counter that I was just using, I simply select the counter. Or I could change. As you see here, I'll switch. Let's switch to this counter. In count is assigned the value of, well, at this point, I can add a numerical value. I can add variable plus a numerical value. And let's do that. If we're going to count with it, then all I want to do is add 1 to it every time my robot reaches this line of code. Now, if I just put the number 1, then what will happen is my robot will reach the line of code and reassign in counter the value of 1 every cycle. So I can't count that way. What I have to do is get creative. I have to build what's called a condition here. So what I want to do is make sure I select the same variable. In count is assigned the value of in count. So here we're not really accomplishing much. We have to build a condition on this side. So let's look at this. In count if we use our plus and minus sign right here, your plus sign gives you mathematical operators along with Boolean operands. And we'll be doing Boolean videos later, but for now we're sticking with our counters. And to add one to it, then we simply want to in count is assigned the value of in count plus edit only selected one. Okay, looks good. Okay, and there we go. We have three lines of code that do the exact same job. Increment in counter 1 will add 1 to it. Add to in counter 1 the value of 1. That simply adds 1 to it. And in count is assigned the value of in count plus 1. So if in count was 5 and it reaches this line of code, now it's 5 plus 1, 6. So we've basically incremented it there. So that's three ways to accomplish the same result. I could use any of these three to count my cycles with. All right, now let's look at how we clear that counter because sometimes you need to clear a counter. Back under Add Instruction because anything we're going to put in our program is under this button. So here we have a clear instruction. Let's use it. When I select Clear, notice how it just jumps into my code. It's going to default to the last variable that I used with the last simple instruction that I used, as you see here and here. Now, if I need to change this variable, I just double tap it and go to my argument screen. And here, I'm going to clear in count. Okay, and there we go. Here, clear in count, which basically means set it to zero. So we cleared the counter here. Let's look at one more way to clear a counter. Add instruction once again. Everything we want is under this one button. This time I'm going to use the assign instruction. So I choose assign, and it's wanting to know what variable do I want to assign what value to. So here we simply want to assign in count is assigned to clear it would be the value of zero. So here, when you want to enter a numerical value and you don't have the one, two, three button that we saw earlier, you have to hit edit only selected. Then it will accept mathematical values. I put a zero in there. In count is assigned the value of zero. So when we come back here and look and drop our instruction window or menu down, increment in counter, that's going to add one to it. Add to in counter the value of one, that's going to add one to it. In count is assigned the value of in count plus one. Same thing. All three of these are the same function basically. Clear in count, setting it to zero. In count is assigned a value of zero. So those are five instructions we can use to count, we can use to set to zero. And one more thing, let's look at one more thing real quick with the assign instruction. Add instruction, assign. Let's say I'm moving pallets with parts that are stacked on that pallet. I have a robot that comes and picks up this pallet, and it moves the pallet to another location for the forklift to come and get it. Well, if I want to count pallets, that's pretty easy. We just increment our counter by one for every pallet it picks up. But if there are 10 parts on that pallet, and I want to know the overall number of parts, then I can get a little creative here. 
let's say our counter is, let's use the bad part variable here. In bad part is assigned the value of, now what we have to do, this would represent my parts, is look at the counter that we used to count how many times that pallet was moved. So let's say our variable here represents how many times that pallet is moved. And we know there were 10 parts on that pallet, so we can simply multiply the times the pallet was full and moved by the number 10. And there we go. In bad part, this is one variable, is assigned the value of a second variable times 10. So when it comes to the assign instruction, a lot of instructions on the ABB pendant, it's only limited to your imagination and your knowledge of the system. Remember, the robot will only do what you tell it to do. So all we have to do is figure out how to tell it what we want it to do just the right way. So I hope you enjoyed the video and check out the Serious Survivor channel. We're going to have a lot more robot programming videos. We're going to be doing some KUKA and some Nachi later and maybe some Stobly too. So check us out and for now, Serious Survivor out.